Dillon. Welcome back to my acoustic courses. I, I wanted to explore basically each chord and spend a little time on the sonic value and just the whole vibe of each chord because you know I'm noticing that if I'm playing a song in the key of A or the key of G they have very very different sounds. Their tonality is different and where I go with it on guitar is different. So I'm going to start out at the top of the alphabet at the, the, the A, the key of A. And this is what I, some of the things I do with an A chord. Here's an A major, obviously. You could hit it like this, like that. But now I want to go deeper and show you some places you can go in the key of A that are really particular to that key. So I, I opened up with sort of an R and B. Curtis Mayfield thing. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you each one of these licks is what I'm doing, but I just want to give you an example of where you can go and what the sound of each of each chord is. So in A obviously I'm playing first position there and just really simple. And I'm using the low E and A as a sort of a walk-up. up an F sharp, A, F sharp, A. So that's like a very R&B mood. You'll notice I'm muting. And then if you want to play your, uh, what I call the second position A, you can do a straight ahead bar chord like this. But I'll just tell you right now, often what we do as guitarists is we'll do what we call partials. And a partial A would look like this. Now why do I like that? Well, it's got an open A string for one thing. So it's not all that much different than this, but we've got, of course, these this set of notes. So if you spell out that chord, it's the same notes, but on a different part of the neck. Different sound, right? So this is one of the things I like about the key of A. I'm able to keep those open strings going. soul licks out of it. You know, you'll notice all this time I have never changed out of A. I've never gone to the four chord, I've never gone to the, to the E or the D. And if you want to go all the way up, of course you have this, which is the same as this to the octave. So what we've really done here is we've kind of explored the sound of A in using all the five positions that I already showed you. We covered those in a, another clip, okay? So I'm trying to tie these clips together so that you can have tools to use in each key and, be, and feel free to get up and down the neck and, and kind of connect it all together. Now, to take it to a whole other place, we'll go to like a little more of a rockabilly kind of... and sounds fairly simple I think. I'm using my thumb, I'm kind of getting a little bit uh, rootsy with it I guess I would say. So uh, you know some people we, we, we look at this A and say okay that's a basic A but a lot of times I'll just use my finger, my first finger and not even worry about that high E at all or I'll jump up here. Quite often I'll just play you know the middle strings, the A root. Now the trick to this one is I'm, I'm reaching my thumb over doing like a so I'm going picking up that F sharp and it sounds like this in practice
different voicings you can do. And I'm just kind of messing around, you know, nothing's in particular, but using those open strings is really a value in the key of A. Especially if you're playing acoustic guitar or you're playing with a friend and you want to get that kind of almost bass rhythm going. one. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is if I want a more of an open sounding A chord, there's a million places you can go. We all know an E chord by now in this position, right? Why not move that all the way up to the seventh fret? Pretty cool. Come down on the A note. Almost get that. Wide open sound, right? couple, three or four different ways you can approach the A chord and all the different moods you can get into, whether it's, you know, more of a, kind of a singer-songwriter storytelling kind of thing, or rockabilly, or R&B. So this clip was Brought to you by the key of A. I'll see you down the road. Hey, I'm Jimmy Dillon, back with some uh, exploration of each chord. Uh, we started out with A, now we're moving up to B. Now, key of B, as I mentioned before, to me, each, each chord, each, each note, each chord, each key, has kind of its own sound. B, to me, is kind of, unless you're in a minor key, a B major is you know, fairly bright, and it's got some uh, inherent things on the guitar that sound cool. I was just doing a, more of a, like a Texas. just a simple blues you've seen that blues rock thing but what I'm doing is different here is I'm incorporating this note I'm letting that ring out reminds me a little bit of the Beatles uh, come together sound and also obviously ZZ Top nationwide So that's, that's, I happen to do that in B because it suits my voice. I'm not even sure what the original key is, but it doesn't really matter. We're, we're exploring the sound of B. Now, another what B is like a first position, sort of B7 kind of thing. Kind of a, almost like Creedence Clearwater kind of. Baseline going, you can do it. So I like that. I like that kind of folk blues sound of B2. And then you know, there, there's the, we've gone through all the the five positions that you can play. You can do this one, this one, this one, this one. All the way up. Kind of a hard one on acoustic, but that's that D shape. But again, if you look at that and you want, depending on what kind of music you're doing, uh, it's pretty cool. Now, if you want to go to a minor feel, stay in B minor. That has a whole other. 
in B minor is one of my favorite keys. I write it in B minor a lot. Is you can you can take that B note and walk it down. You can also lift up your if you're doing a bar chord in B minor, and you can lift up your index finger and, and like pick up that high E. to a, a, a five major. That's kind of a Spanish sound. F sharp, back to B minor. And the reason I mention that, you can also pick up those harmonics, don't forget about that. If you're not familiar with those, to get a harmonic like that, and this, this, this plays into the coloration of what these chords sound like, you got a B minor, and maybe you're playing a rhythm, and you want to do something different and let it ring out, say, so I go. How do you do that? You lay your fingers over this fret here, which is like one, two, three, four, six, seventh fret. And rather than play in between the frets like you do the chord, you actually go right on the fret and you go and lay your finger across it. It's a touch thing, right? But you can do it in, in D, it's a D chord or a B minor. It works well. Playing the guitar, especially acoustic, is all about the dynamics, the rise and fall, the coloration. So there's a B minor, and then there's a B major. You can lift that up too. I showed you that in A. Looks well in B too. See, what I'm doing is, li is lifting my index finger on the high strings. Another B is, that's really cool is this one. So that looks just like a second position B, except you're going like this. You're taking your third finger and your pinky, putting them on the fourth fret of the D and the G string, and you're barring here. Kind of a mysterious chord. And these are all, you know, you can get into theory all day long in scales, and that's fine. But what I really go for is how do you create a mood playing guitar? That's what I'm, that's what I'm in this for. So it's all, it's all good to learn as much as you can technically, as much as you like to learn. But then at the end of the day, how does it work in practice? You know, when you're writing or performing or just playing with friends. So the stuff I'm sharing with you, especially on this chordal study that we're doing here, is really all about how can you find ways to to sort of emote or express yourself, you know, playing guitar, in this case acoustic, but it applies to electric as well. And my point of this whole exercise is that each, each chord, each sound, each key has a specific feel and sound to it. They're all different. So how can I, you know, impart some like little technique or tricks or things to change the mood, to make it happen, make it interesting. And that's that's my goal here. So that's my uh, that's my little journey into the the key of B, both minor and major. We went to. Thanks a lot. On to the C chord we go. So uh, the key of C has a very specific sound. You know, if you if you play in the first position, and you hear an awful lot of songs, C is often called the people's key. Why, I don't know. But probably because on piano it's easy to play, you can see all the, all the notes. But, you know, there's a couple of different ways. I know I covered the five positions of the key of C and all the way up. But what I didn't talk about was if you're in the first position, I get this a lot from students. They're like, yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm hitting this thing and it... Like, what's that? Okay, well, the truth is that that E note, that low E note, yeah, it's in the key of C. It's in the chord of C. 
But it sounds kind of weird playing along that. So here's my way around that. I take my third finger and put it on the third fret of the low E string, and I make what's what I call a big cowboy C. It looks like this. You may be familiar with this, you may not be. But if you're not, it's really handy. Because I can play this with impunity. I can play it and I'm not gonna bump anything. There's no funny notes in there. And, it, and the bonus is it's really big and fat. That's why I call it a big cowboy chord. So what, what also happens is that low G note, when you want to release to the five, about the sound of each chord, each key, whatever, uh, it's important to see where you go to make it release. You see a lot of songs with just maybe just a C and a G in it. You know? Then if you want to if you want to move up a little bit and you know, to sort of in, kind of explore the different voicings of the key of C, then you got your second your second position C chord. Now this chord is different. It's a bar chord, right? And a lot of people have trouble with those, but it can also be used in many different ways. I'm always looking for ways to open chords up and you know somehow sneak some open strings in there. depends on the song, you know, it could be... That's got a mood to it. It's got a closed chord. You open it up like that. Uh, as far as moving, moving up further, you know, we use this bar C quite a bit. Uh, it's, 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 you know, a little bit challenging if you're, if you're just a beginner. But once you get it, you know, I've explained this before, but I'll mention it again. You know, when you play a low E chord, you know, basically what you're doing when you move up is you're going up. There's your C. So I mentioned that because it's the same position. Your fingers are in the same place, but you just move them up here. Now, one of the tricky ones I, I do in C, and this one's it's a little difficult to maneuver, but it's worth it when you get it. And I, I, sh I showed you this one, I think, earlier in G. You take, your, you take your C chord, your bar chord. Now, what I do is I, I bring my first finger down here and play these two notes. And I let the E ring out, and I put my pinky and third finger here, and I reach my thumb over. Now, this is a little ambitious, I know, but it's, listen to how cool it sounds. So that's a that's a way of opening up that C. And again, if you're playing that up that bar C, and you want to get a little different flavor, you can go up to that high C, which again is like this is like this D position all the way up here. And I don't want to go too over you know I don't go over anybody's head here, but. Again, that R and B thing works there. So let me break it down and make it even simpler. You know, the first thing we talked about was taking that C chord and extending it, okay? Making it bigger. That's really valuable. That you can use right away. You just take that C chord, move that third finger to the low B, tuck that pinky under, man, you're, you're home. It's just really comfortable, it's like a big, big old leather chair. sounds I like is simply taking that second finger and moving it up and down it does a lot. Now watch what happens. For you beginners out there, you can do this. Very easy. Now go to your G. Back home to your C. You know, that's 
not, that's not a difficult thing to grasp if you're a beginner. Uh, but I think it's really important to note that a lot of people have trouble with this. If you're doing a C chord and you're not conscious to keep that low E out of it, it is. It sounds really wonky. It's not good. So if you're good with with being really accurate on your target notes. Another cool thing with the, the bass. But if you're not, definitely utilize this tool. It'll go a long ways. By putting that third finger on the G note of the uh, E string, it's gonna it's gonna really uh, make the whole chord sound more authentic and really good. Now. One last thing on the C chord, if you take your first finger and you lift it up, you get a C major 7, which is kind of a cool thing too. And again, this is easy for you beginners. It makes a whole sound. I've heard that before. It sounds like a Beatles song, doesn't it? So here's a real easy one for you beginners. Play that C I taught you. to infinity. Now, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you a little bit of C minor here, so. What C minor sounds like is this. Obviously a whole different sound. C is very bright and major here. And by taking that bar chord, like a flat third, sounds like that. Now, if you want to in your mind, if you want to understand what a C minor really looks like and feels like with your fingers, just go back to your A minor, right? And move it on up here. But remember, when you do that, and I would recommend doing this, this fingering, you got a bar, right? Because you got to move, everything has to move up. So you're going, you're basically moving this thing up, the nut. And that has, you know, that has a, a certain sound to it, a certain characteristic. What that looks like up here is like this. So you know your bar C, right? We've been over that. Just take your second finger and pick it up. That's C minor. I like to go a little step further and get rid of the pinky too. That's pretty easy. It's almost just you barring your finger right across here and add this, this five note. Add that G note. And it kind of has a cool sound to it. Someone who a lot of people are very comfortable just playing sort of finger style and they might just strum with their thumb. Not everybody is a pick, uses a pick. Some, a lot of people do. If you, if you are uh, comfortable with that, you can get this kind of sound with your thumb. And there's a quality to that I really like. Uh, I learned that from Carlos Santana. I had the good luck to play some gigs with him. and. Uh, a lot of times he'll cup his, his pick and he'll just play with the skin of his thumb. Totally different sound than this, right? So, you know, both are legit for sure. But if you're comfortable, I always say, you know, don't struggle too much. Whatever you're comfortable with, do it. But, but C minor has got a great mood to it. If you're down here and you want to do C minor, you can do this. It sounds like this. Kind of hard to do. Yeah, that's a hard fingering. I'm not sure I would recommend that. I don't use it much. I I do go. Sometimes I'll go. Uh, what I'll do in G minor. I'll go. It's cool chord. Kind of mysterious. But I think for our purposes today, we'll just stick with the straight C minor.
minor there and C minor here. Looks like this up here, like a D minor. But I think for for the purposes of especially for beginners, you know, we just you got C here. We showed you the, the full C there. Showed you the lift off. That's really usable. And then we showed you just the straight C minor here, which I think for our purposes is a, a good place to start because you know what an A minor looks like. So just move it up here. And you got it. And you can also do a bass. And if you lift the whole thing off, very cool move. So really what I'm doing here is we're going through each chord, A, B, C, D, right at the neck. And we're uh, what I hope I'm doing is, is showing you some cool licks and cool little tools that you can work around even in, really, in a really basic, simple way that will give you an understanding of what the neck of, up and deck, down the neck of the guitar, you know, what you can make happen. The key of D, one of my very favorite keys. Uh, the first the first position D chord is, is a fairly simple one. Lots of ways to play it though, lots of ways to finger it. You can do it like this, or you can do it like this. Seventh, lots of different moods. Here's one of the things I like about the key of D. You have this open D string, which is your target note, you know, your root note. So there's lots of things you can do with it. And you can move this D up and down the neck. That kind of Led Zeppelin sound, right? So it's got this almost kind of Celtic sort of sound, at least when we play the open D. So uh, the other thing I like about it is where you can go with D. You can go the sound of the D, the D chord, the major D chord. You can dance around it like. whether it's the Beatles or whoever. And I, just, I love how each chord has its own sort of characteristics and to me D is, is a very chimey So if you're if, you, if you're comfortable playing that first position and you want to move on up the neck and explore different sounds in D, you can of course do this one, which is your second position D chord basically. And you got your you got your same root note, but you're hitting it with a closed on the fifth fret. And then now the actual full chord of this is got that A note in, which is that's a hard one to, to accomplish, so like I've said, um, I tend to do this one and not even mention that high E you know, you have to include it. And then from there, you can go to this one, which is just... That's a cool sound. And then all the way, of course, octave up. Well, octave is actually here. Now that's a cool thing because you can go from a low D first position all the way up to an octave D. And I actually use that a lot. So if you want to dance around, you can do like a. trick that I like to do, I showed you the second position, that's a full D chord, right? And you can do a harmonic, which again is a sort of a technique where you lay your finger softly on the strings. In this case you lay it over the seventh fret, because that is where that, that D chord lives. People like uh, The Alarm, U2. Very effective thing to have in your uh, in your tool chest. 
but what I was going to mention was if, is if you're in that second position D and you, you're just dying to have some open strings, you can just do this. from you too, he does a lot of that. So that's one of the things I like about the key of D is that, especially those particular versions of the D chord, you can get really free with it. You can move around. Notice my, my fingers haven't changed a bit. They're doing the same exact a uh, pattern. Same chord. I remember when we all figured that out that you can just take that D chord and move it up and down the neck and it was just like such a free moment. But if you if you lift up your uh, your second finger you get a lot of minor is, is a whole different sound. Flat in the third, so it goes from this very bright kind of up sound to a almost like a, a moody sound. And then the second position D minor looks like this, but I like to once again let that D string ring out. So you can you can play Again, you can slide up and down, but you got to move your fingers, so... And then you can go up to a high D minor. And all the way up. And again, in the same way that you did the major, do the minor same way. Kind of an effective little... So here's what it sounds like if I if I go up and down the neck with a D minor and get free with it. Lastly, I want to give you a little a little tip on uh, a way, especially if you're playing, uh, say, for instance, acoustic solo. You're just doing a solo thing. You don't have anybody else with you, and you want to make a really fat sound. This is a killer technique. You take your uh, op your low E and drop it down. And now you've got an, uh, a drop D. Great sound. And that's something you can experiment with on your own, whether it's in drop D major or get away with a D minor too. finger picking, which some people are more comfortable finger style, or just even strumming with the thumb, you can get some really cool things. You can you can do that dead thumb on your low and then pick up that that uh, that second position. Again it's sort of that houses of the holy love zapping kind of sound. I'm not gonna try to sing like Robert Plant. I just saw him at uh, San Francisco recently. Still sounded great. So this sound reminds me of like the, some of the really great early Beatles, Led Zeppelin, uh, Traffic, that kind of stuff. And also some of the folk, you know, kind of bottom line. Now if you take it into like a, a blues feel, So we 
we've, we've covered a lot of different moods of D. Uh, lastly, it was the drop D. And I'll, I'll just play, I'll play you out with a cool little pattern. The key of E. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna jump right into uh, some kind of funky blues because the key of E for me anyway. When I'm playing acoustic blues, when I'm around doing a gig or something, I often start out with E just because it's got all those. Uh, it's just a great key for guitar. It's got a lot of open strings. So the first the first thing we'll talk about is uh, the first position E, which looks like that. Neck, we can go to to this one, which I rarely ever use, if ever. Very difficult chord to finger. What I do use, though, is this one. I use that a lot. Now, the way that the best way to explain that is if you you look at your D chord. I often do a D this way. You can do it like that too. But if you take that D chord and add this here, move it up two. Get your pinky over here on the seventh fret A string, and you got a you got a second position, basically second or third, depending on how you look at it. Another way to do the E chord. The next one is here. The next one's here. The next last one is here. Now, what can you do with E? Well, it's endless, of course. But one of the things I like to do is I like to do straight up blues, which is. You know, shuffle so you might ask what am I doing I'm just taking my first finger putting it here I'm playing just the, the lower end of the E chord and my third finger on the uh, fourth fret do something a little more rhythmic you can move up and do like a bow diddly thing okay so let's hear what it sounds like when I move up and down the neck okay I'm just gonna do the same rhythm and move up you'll notice on this this high E, I could bar it all the way. That's a tough one on acoustic, it's a big stretch and there's a time for that. But often if I'm strumming on acoustic and I'm doing a rhythmic thing like this, I'll either do just like this E, very very same fingering, all the way up to the octave. And it works pretty well. First time I ever heard that used in a song. I'm not sure, but I think it was uh, "Only You Know and I Know" by Dave Mason or something like that. And as you may have noticed, I, I really like utilizing as many open strings as I can, especially on acoustic guitar, because I want I want it to ring out. If I'm playing maybe solo or even with someone else, kind of nice to get that. You want to get free with it, so one way to do that is if you're playing a song that incorporates maybe several chords like an E and A and a B, say. One way to get around that without having to learn too much 
is keeping that same exact figuration in your e, in your fingers. And just move it up to the seventh fret. So basically, I haven't done anything. I haven't changed anything. I've just moved it up. And this is kind of a cool thing to know. So watch, watch what happens when I move up and down the neck and not changing that E, that E form at all. Now this is a for all you beginners out there. This is a way you can have fun with the key of E. Without really having to change your your finger position, other than up and down the neck, but, but your fret your fretting is the same. And and then I'll I'll play you something really cool now for anybody the Eric Clapton fans. Uh, he did uh, recently. I just watched a YouTube video of him doing uh, the re the creamy reunion. I think it was in I don't know 2005 maybe at Albert Hall, and they did I'm so glad, which is like kind of a. What you can do again, without without really changing your uh, your fingering at all, just moving up and down the neck, and you can really go. You can go. So you know you can get really free with it. Uh, I showed you a little blues. That's cool. Now I want to show you uh, a little minor stuff, E minor, which is you know just such a great key. You've heard it a million times. Got a great sound. done on the, the A minor is you take it your finger, your first finger, and lifted it up and flatten the third. And then there's there's many ways to make that E minor chord. Uh, here's one way. It's kind of cool. Which is like a G chord but with a or you go up here. That's nice. And of course all the way up. to doing that, you know, basically you're on the uh, 12th fret here. And you barely touch it and you put your finger over the fret. It's that kind of chimey sound. But uh, E minor lends itself to that kind of coloration. And I'll show you what I mean. In, in practice it goes like this. because it's got that low E in it. So many great songs that utilize that. It's Tom Petty or Springsteen or Maroon 5, whatever. So that's your E minor shot in the arm. The key of F. Some people call this, uh, some of my students call this the ouch chord because it's, it's the first uh, bar chord that they have to learn if they're moving up from E. You go to F and it's this ouch. So it's true that it's a, it's a difficult chord and what can I tell you? You gotta get your hands strong and just do it. You gotta gut it out. Um, if, you're, if you're new and you wanna find an alternate way of playing the F, you could do it like this. Okay, that's a, what I call a partial chord. It's 
So you got your third finger on the third fret of the D, second finger on the two of the G, first finger on the one of the B and high E. And so if, if you find that to be easy, you know, you can start out with a C chord, if you know the C chord, and simply go like this down to that F. Which comes in handy because the C is the five of the F. It's the turnaround. So if you go from F to C, that's actually a good thing to practice like this. Those two chords go together really well, obviously. Uh, another thing you can do is if you lift your f first finger up off your E string, you get a, a, what's called an F major 7. Very specific sounding chord. And that's pretty cool. There's a place for it, for sure. JJKL. Really pretty chord. So there are a lot of things you can do to, you know, to curtail the pain until you're, until you're strong enough to, to do that. The other option is to use a capo, and that's a whole other subject, but uh, the second uh, position of this, of this chord, this F chord, is going up here to your fifth fret, and you play a D, which is like a D chord, right? And move it, move up four, and there you are. One of the, I, actually my, my pal just told me one way he gets to this chord if you know how to do a D minor, some people are comfortable with that. So do the D minor, and now just take your pinky and put it up here on this F note, and you got it, okay? So sometimes we can trick ourselves into uh, making really difficult chords easier by applying a chord you already know and just moving your pinky up here. It's still gonna be a bit of a stretch and you know, take some time. And then of course the next one would be that's your third position F chord there. That's a bar chord. Nothing much to say about that except there it is. You know, it's useful. And then the next one is here. And then if you go all the way up, I'm going to make a partial there. Now, if you want to do an F minor, for, you know, get into a minor feel, all you have to do is Take your second finger and release it, okay? And then it'll go back here. And now, of course, it'll be... That's a minor sound, a darker sound, right? And then the next position would be this, right there, which looks like a D minor. Another cool chord to work off of in the key of F is take a D chord here, take this D chord and move it up here. That's a like a major seventh kind of. Nice little coloration there, right? You can work off that. So if you're playing in the key of F, A great little R&B lick. So what did I do there? You may want to know. All I did was take my index finger and just slide it up. And you've heard that lick obviously a million times. And that's a good one. You can also start high here. a little bit more advanced for, for those of you that are that are more advanced players. But if you're playing in F and you're looking for a lick that works, F is a hard one because it's a closed chord, so you don't have the luxury of all these open strings like you do in E and G and even D. So you gotta find ways to do hammer-ons and 
I call it the connective tissue that makes you know songs really interesting and guitar playing interesting. So we've we've covered a little bit of F, a little bit of F minor, and here's what it sounds like. I'm just going to give you an example of things you can do going from F to C. That's a common change. my thumb over, right? So what that allows me to do, the reason that works is it's hard to do that if you're doing a bar. It doesn't really work, does it? But if you thumb it, if you go over with a thumb and you take your second finger and release it from the G string, showing you a pattern you can work. F to C, F to C. And the major seventh sounds like this. exploration of the key of F, both F and, and F minor, and it's a great, it's a great, uh, a great chord. It's, it's a little bit challenging, especially if you're just starting out. So, you know, go easy on yourself. Do the partials like I showed you until you're strong enough to do a full bar, and then when you're, when you're really strong enough, you can get that thumb over and get some cool... the key of F. This lesson is uh, brought to you by the G chord. <laughs> okay, that's my favorite all-time chord, I gotta say. Several reasons for that. Um, it's one of the first chords I learned, for one thing. And, you know, if you notice the first position chord, you can play it several different ways. You can do the second finger on the third fret of the E string, and the first finger on the second fret of the A string, and then just third finger down here, third fret of the, of the G string. Now, if you're just beginning on guitar, this is a great place to start. Because it's a full chord, it's a full body chord, and it doesn't demand a whole lot of, uh, of stress on your hands or anything. And it sounds full and nice, okay? So I'm going to take apart the C. First, I'm going to show you all the different C, uh, G chords. I'm going to show you a couple of extra that have what I call the magic sauce on them. So there's this first one here, we just discussed. Okay, then you have the bar chord, which I know we've been going through. Looks like this. Truth is, we don't we don't play that full bar chord all that much. Uh, we do play it once in a while, but we don't really play. Uh, I mean, rock and roll. You could play. You, know, you get the Chuck Berry thing. And you play it sometimes. Uh, there's definitely a place for it. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is well. There's one way to do it like this. That's a little bit of stretch. Uh, You've got your first finger on the G note of the uh, D string, fifth fret, and then uh, you got your second finger stretching all the way out to a D note on your D string, and your pinky here on the uh, B string, and then your third finger on the B note of the E string. I would recommend this one unless you're, I don't use it that much, I usually do a partial. So I would recommend playing that just like your D chord and move it right up to the 7th fret. How about that? That's easier. And another way to approach that, and we'll get to some different voicings in a second, is let that G string ring out. Why not utilize all those open strings? So you'll see if you're playing a G string here, a G chord here, you've got the D, the, the G, and the B all ringing out. And finally your G note here on the 3rd fret. Well, if you want to simplify this mid shape, you know, all the way up here, just do like... And you'll hear it like... Or, you want to add the, the D shape. I'm talking about the cage system. That's 
in a D shape. That works well. Next one we're going to talk about is a uh, is a bar. Uh, let's see, up here one more G chord. Oh, this one here. That's a bit of a stretch. You can also play it like this. Uh, again, I don't play it that way very often because it's, it's kind of wonky, not that easy. So I usually play it barring here on the uh, 10th fret and then just laying my finger across here. That's kind of a rock and roll thing. And then finally, if you want to go up here, you can bar on the 12th fret the D, G, and B string and either get your pinky up here on the G note 13 fret on the 15th fret, or you can also cover the B string too. This is sort of an A shape if we're talking about the cage system. <clears throat> so once again, G. Now I'm going to show you yet another version of the first position G, and this one comes in really handy. Uh, got your pinky on the third fret of the E string, then you got your third finger tucked right above it placed right above it here you can see on the third fret of the B string. And you'll see in a minute why this is so handy. So you still got your first finger here on the second fret of the A string and your second finger on the third fret of the E string. Okay, the first, uh, the sixth string in this case. So listen to what this sounds like though. A little different than, that's nice. This one has a special twang to it. I wanted to show you that is that I use it, you know, anytime you can not have to move around too much and strain yourself, especially when you're first learning, it's a value, I think. So what I can do here is I can go from a G to a C simply by moving these two fingers down one string. And if you go back and forth like that, especially it could come in really handy because you can just strum back and forth. Great, great way to just kind of get your rhythm going. Get your right hand in gear. So let's move up a little bit. There's a G there. Now I haven't shown you this one yet. This is basically in the D shape. If you look at a full D chord in regards to the cage system, move all the way up to the seventh fret. That's a bit of a stretch for most of you, but the other way is you can just remove your pinky and do a partial. Or once again, just, I like that one. It's really a lot easier. And then you have this one here, which is Acoustic guitar is it's, it's a lot to hold down. It's more of an electric thing in here. And then all the way up here. Hard to do on acoustic, huh? All that is is the octave version of this. But there's a, one more chord I want to show you here before I leave you in the G. And there's, honest to God, I could go through the G. George Harrison called it the magic G chord because he used it in a lot of his writing with the Beatles. This is a, a little bit advanced for you, but if you take just half of that bar G chord, forget about these low strings for a minute, okay? And take your third finger, put it on the fifth fret of the D string, okay? And then let the E string, uh, the G string, sorry, ring out. Now bar the B string and the G string with your first finger on the third fret. Check this out. It's a little bit of a stretch. That's a nice sound. And you can get kind of some cool... A little country twang going. And the reason I mention that is because all these versions of G come in handy for different applications. If you're doing, you know, kind of more rock and roll or even reggae. If you 
want to get a close sound. That's cool. Rock and roll again. That's what the bar G is for. Mostly. Uh, but then if you get into if you get into like the R&B stuff, um, especially on electric guitar, we generally don't hit those bottom strings that much because if you got a bass player involved, you know, if you're playing in a band, that's going to get in the way. So what we'll do is do partials, and it'll sound like more like. All I'm doing is hitting the half a G, going up to this G. Remember, the D shape. And you got Soul Man. And another thing you can do if you want to get really ambitious, and I'll leave you with this, if you're doing that, that G that I just showed you, kind of a country twangy G, if you're able to, uh, if you're a little more advanced, and you, you can do the whole G with your thumb over, and again, this is ambitious, but what the heck, you can get that sound going. I use this a lot. Um, I'll move it up and down the neck. about it you get that, that G droning throughout now I know I'm, I'm getting in a much more advanced zone here but I wanted to give you an example of just how many things you can do with G and I'll leave you with a, a little lick that I do uh, it's a, an original song called River Song had the great honor, actually, of recording with a guy named Chuck LaBelle, keyboard player for uh, the Stones and Almond Brothers. We did this as a duet. You can check it out. And it goes like this. So that's one of the many, many ways you can use the G chord. And again, it's my favorite chord. I just love it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Jimmy has the coolest guitar lessons. Go to jimmydillon.com slash free and get all your amazing gifts. He's the best. Roll, rock and roll. Stay awesome and rock and roll. Hey, thanks for watching the video. And you know what it would mean a lot to me if you'd hit the subscribe button above and then hit the bell notification for new videos when they come out.